Hi everyone, Kevin here from Golf Guy Reviews, and in this video today, I'm gonna to go through the top three rated rangefinders available to buy on Amazon at the moment for under 100 pounds. Now, I've got here the AFA GX2S. I've also got the Vorstick Pro right there. And lastly, I've got the Woe Sports H100 as well. Now, all three of these rangefinders can be bought for under 100 pounds on Amazon, and they've all got both slope and flag lock. So I'm going to go through and compare all three of these. I've used them all side by side out on the course, so I'm going to let you know all about how they feel, the quality of them, as well as actually how they perform out on the course. And I'm going to let you know which one I would personally buy. Well, actually, I bought all three of them, so, you know, I bought all of them. But I'm going to let you know which one I think you guys should buy, and I'm going to let you know which one I think is the best. Now, if you do think you want to buy one of these, then I have included my affiliate links down in the description below. And let's jump straight in. So the first place I'm going to start is actually with the boxes. Now that might sound a little bit strange, but you might be considering buying one of these as a gift. And so you're going to want to know what the packaging actually looks like. So first of all, if we start with the Woe Sports, I would say that this is the most basic of the packaging. You know, it doesn't necessarily look too premium and there's nothing particularly amazing going on on the inside there. So that's the Woe Sports. Then moving on, we've got the Vorstick. So I'd say this looks a little bit better, a little bit more professional. Again, nice and easy to open. Um, again, nothing in particular or amazing going on on the inside there. Um, but yeah, that's what the box of the Vorstick looks like. But then lastly, you've got the AFA. So with the AFA, I think this is the most professional looking of the three boxes. Um, and I think it looks nice and clean and tidy. You've got a nice little logo on the top. You've got a bit more kind of information on the side of it. You've actually got a picture of the uh, unit itself. And just generally, you know, I think it looks a little bit more high quality. And when it opens up, then you would just kind of see the unit sitting on the inside there. So of the three, definitely I'd say the AFA has got the best packaging. Now, if you are looking for more in-depth reviews of all three of these rangefinders, then I've actually done separate individual reviews. So we're not going to go too deep today in this video. I'm just going to do light for light comparisons while we've got them side by side. So let's actually talk about the look and the feel of them. So let's have a look at the Woe Sport first of all. Now I've got to say that this one is probably the cheapest feeling one of the three. Um, it's not that particularly good to look at. It's quite kind of boxy in its design. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean that that affects the performance of the unit, but just generally in, time, in terms of the looks, you know, it, it doesn't really fit in your palm particularly well. It's kind of boxy, it hasn't kind of got the ergonomics of some of the other designs. On a positive note, I'd say that actually of the three, these have definitely got kind of the biggest, chunkiest buttons on them. Um, but although it doesn't necessarily mean that actually the buttons are difficult to use on the easiest ones, but these have definitely got the biggest buttons and they feel quite good there. They've got a little bit of a click to them when you use them. Um, and in terms of where the battery sits, so on this unit here, it's actually kind of this pull down bit in the, uh, in the rear. It's actually pretty cheap and flimsy feeling and there's no rubber seals along the inside. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily want to use this in too heavy a rain, to be honest. It's going to do a job, it's going to hold out, but you know, there is a chance that some water could get in there. And it just runs off of a standard CR2 battery, which comes in the box. If we then take a look at the Vorstick, uh, so although it's called the Vorstick, it's also got these kind of stickers on them called D-Tape, um, and that's on the box as well. So. I'm not sure whether this is called the raw stick or the D tape, not quite sure what's going on there. But I would say that this definitely feels a little bit more like a rangefinder. It's got a little bit more kind of shape to it. Um, you've got this kind of textured rubber grip element on the bottom there. You can see uh, it's just kind of generally feels a little bit nicer to hold. You've got this kind of slight cut out in the top. Um, and again, the buttons are quite nice and big and chunky and kind of, you know, again, got quite a nice feel to them. So in terms of actually how it feels in the hand, personally, I prefer this one over the Vorstick. Um, what kind of gets on my nerves a little bit are these cheap stickers. Uh, so you can kind of see that they just kind of catch your hand on the side and it's already starting to peel off. Personally, I think I'm just gonna rip them off in a little bit. In terms of the battery on the Vorstick, and it's actually a USB battery. So you can see there you've just got like a rubber pull and you can pull it out there and then that's how you charge it. You get the cable in the box, but you don't get the kind of plug element that goes in the wall. But to be honest, everyone's probably got those at home already, so that's not a big deal. This one definitely feels like it's got the most weight to it of the three. Um, and in terms of the battery, it means that you haven't got to replace it. Uh, you still get the little battery kind of icon at the top, so you can tell when it's running low. Uh, but it does mean that you will have to remember to charge the battery. So moving on to the AFA GX2S. And this is certainly the biggest of the three. Uh, you know, it's not, it's not outrageously big, but it certainly feels the biggest in your hand, but it also does kind of feel the most premium. 
it still has a lot of plastic on it. So when I say most premium, I mean most premium when you're thinking of the fact that these cost about £100. But it definitely feels the most premium because you've got a lot of kind of rubber texture on the top there for your grip. You've also got a lot more rubber on the bottom and it's a lot more sculpted as well. You can see that cut out on the bottom there just means that it fits in your hand a lot nicer. It's a lot more substantial. What I would say is that the buttons are the smallest of the three. Um, again, they've got a nice click to them, so they still work nice and easy. But what I would say is that I do really like the kind of look and design of this one here. You've got a little bit of kind of red on the front. You've got these sharp kind of angles. You've got these lines going across the side uh, on both sides there. So I think personally, this one looks the best. In terms of the battery as well, you've actually got a little screw compartment. So you can see here on the side that you actually unscrew it and that's how you get to the battery. Again, there are no kind of rubber seals on that. So again, I wouldn't say that this is necessarily gonna hold up if you've got this really, really wet, but I would say actually that it does secure the battery probably the best compared to the Woe Sports. Now, something else you're gonna to wanna to know about when using these out on the course are the cases. So starting off with the Vorstick and what you get is this kind of old school material type case. Uh, it's got a magnetic fastening on the front there. It's not overly secure, but it does the job. And all three of them come with the carabiner clip to clip it to your bag at the back. But in terms of protection for the Vorstick, you're not gonna get a massive amount of protection, either in terms of waterproofness, as well as in terms of dropping it. Uh, you're gonna get some, but certainly not the most because it's an old style soft case. Moving on, then the other two have got very, very similar cases in terms of the design. You can see here that you've got the D-Tape Vorstick, here is the grey one, and then you've got the AFA, which is this black one here with the orange. They look really, really similar. They both work in the same way. So if I show you on the Vorstick, uh, first of all, you've got a zip that goes right away around the side. Looks pretty much just like most of the rangefinder cases that you get out on the market. Just got it caught there. There we go, so it zips up nice and easy. And then what you've also got for when you're using it out on the course, is just the elasticated pull tab on the back. So that just hooks over the front. So it's a lot easier to actually use out on the course instead of unzipping it and zipping it every time, you just do the pull tab and you take it out. In terms of how they look, personally, I think the A4 actually looks better as a case. It would look better on the side of my bag, but you know, it's not the end of the world that this one's silver and this one's black. Neither of these cases are waterproof, but definitely they look a little bit more professional. They look a little bit more expensive as well, sitting on the side of your bag. So we've gone through how they look and feel as well as the cases that they come with, but now let's talk about actually how they perform out on the course and some of the functionality which comes with each. Now, first of all, I said at the beginning, there are some similarities with them all. So they've all got a flag lock mode and they've all also got a slope mode. However, there is something a little bit different even there. So first of all, with the Woe Sports and the AFA, you can turn off the slope mode. So that means that these are tournament legal because you're not allowed to use slope when you're playing in an official tournament. However, with the Vorstick, I can't find a way of turning off the slope mode. I've looked all through the manual, there's not actually that much detail in there, and I've played about with it for ages, I can't turn off the slope. All three of these units have got six times magnification and that's pretty standard amongst rangefinders pretty much right the way throughout the industry. And they all do say that they can work up to 650 yards. But again, personally, when you're out on the course, you don't really need to measure that far whatsoever. So, you know, it's great that you can do that, but you know, you don't really need it. One thing that's really interesting is on the Amazon account for the Woe Sports, it was actually saying on the listing that the flag lock only works up to 180 yards. However, with all three of the units, I was testing them on a par four and I was getting a flag lock on for over 230, 240 yards. So actually they were definitely locking onto the flags a lot further than just 180 yards. What I would say is actually of the three, the Woe Sports was locking on the quickest and the fastest the further out we were. What I would also say, however, is that in any range kind of under 180 yards, I think the AFA was actually the best. And the reason being is because actually it's got the clearest display. In terms of the crosshairs on the screen, these are nice and big on the AFA, and actually it was just locking on really, really quick and easy. Another thing that I really like about the AFA compared to the other three is actually in terms of the way that you use the modes, there's no cycling through. Uh, so all you've got is just kind of like the one screen. And if you tap the power button, then you just get the quick, sharp reading just straight off. It's not a flag lock mode, it just pings whatever it hits and it gives you that yardage. If you then hold the laser button, then actually you get flag lock mode and you just hover over the flag and it confirms and it gives you a jolt. 
So actually, I think this was the easiest of the three in terms of actual usage. When you compare it to the other two, yes, you've got a flag lock mode, but you have to cycle to get for it with a mode button. And also, it means then that if you miss the flag lock mode, then you've got to cycle back through the other four modes. And both of them give you a speed measuring mode, which you just don't need out on a golf course. There's no point in it being there whatsoever. So in terms of ease of use, I've got to say that the AFA is the easiest for me. Now, I mentioned just a moment ago that the AFA gives you a jolt when it's on flag lock mode. And yep, yeah, I would say that of the three, this has definitely got the kind of firmest jolt uh, when you get that flag lock, which is just a really nice kind of haptic trigger to let you know, yes, I've locked onto the flag and this is the distance to the flag. In terms of jolt, the Woe Sport does also have a jolt mode on it. Um, not quite as strong, I'd say, as the AFA, but again, it's certainly there and does the job really well. However, with the USB chargeable Vorstick, this one doesn't have a jolt. Now, the flag lock mode still works nice and well, kind of under 200 yards. I was even getting it working, as I say, kind of around that 230, 240 yardage. However, for me personally, I just prefer having a rangefinder that has that jolt functionality on it. When you use the flag lock, it kind of gives you a little flag in the corner and lets you know that it's locked on. But there's just something a little bit more kind of comforting, a little bit more assuring when you get that jolt to go, okay, yes, this is definitely locked onto the flag now, and that's the distance that I want to use. A few other small things that are the same across all three of the units. And first of all, one of them is that the fact that you can change the focus of the unit quite easily by just moving the eyepiece there. So on the Woe Sports, you actually move that whole eyepiece. On the Vorstick, you do the same thing as well, although that definitely feels a lot looser compared to the Vorstick. But with the AFA, you adjust it, but you can see that you've got this kind of dial on the top. So you don't move the whole eyepiece, you just move the dial. Now for me personally, I actually think that's the best method because it's the easiest to actually adjust while still holding it to your eye. So with the others, you've got to kind of hold the unit there and you've got to move the eyepiece. You kind of got to bring your eye away from it. With the AFA, you actually keep it nice and close to your eye and adjust it there like that. The other thing that's the same with all three is that you can change them from yards to meters really, really easy and simply, so you don't have to worry whether you're using them over in the States or here in the UK. One other thing that I did want to tell you about with all three of the units is actually the consistency of the yardages that I was getting back. When I was using them out on the course, all three were actually working really quite well and I was impressed with the yardages that I was getting and they were matching up with other rangefinders that I was using. What I would say is that generally there is a little bit of kind of leeway between the three of them. The further out you are, then definitely the more kind of variation you might get when you're looking for a flag. So definitely you're gonna to wanna to scan it a couple of times to make sure you're happy with the yardages that it's giving back to you. What I would say is, is that when you're kind of under 100 yards, then you can probably expect kind of maybe a yard or two difference. When you're over 100 yards, you're probably gonna actually expect maybe two or three yards difference when you're kind of scanning and standing in the same spot. But again, I'm an 18 handicap. I'm not able to kind of control my distances within the tolerance of a couple of yards. And also, these are all under 100 pounds. So you can go out there and you can buy a unit for four or 500 pounds and it's gonna give you much greater kind of accuracy out on the course, but do you really need it? So again, this is why maybe you're watching this video because you're thinking about buying one of these cheaper rangefinders. And so what I can say is through all the times that I've used these out on the course, they definitely perform and do the job, just maybe not quite to the extreme accuracy that some of the more professional units can. So which of the three would I personally recommend? Well, for me, it's definitely the AFA. I would say out of the three, it definitely feels the best in hand. Yes, it is the biggest. So if that's something that you, you know, wanna bear in mind and you might wanna get a slightly smaller one, then I'd probably recommend the Woe Sports instead. However, personally, I like the way that this one feels in my hand. I definitely like the rubber elements on the top and bottom. And what sells it for me personally is the clarity down the screen. The fact that it's got the biggest of the kind of crosshairs on the screen, as well as the ease of use. You're not cycling through different modes that you don't need. If you want a quick range, you just press the button once. And if you want to use flag lock mode, you hold it on and you hover. So there you go. That's my comparison of all three. Let me know down in the comments what you think and which one you think you would actually prefer. And also, if you have found this video helpful, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel so you can keep up to date with all my latest reviews. If you are thinking about buying a rangefinder, then I've included a link here to another review I've done of the Melissi rangefinder. You can buy that again on Amazon for around 120 pounds, so you can see the difference there of that rangefinder compared to these three.